Thank you. Thank you to everybody for coming. I first want to, to say what I think is the, the reason for any maintenance treatment in, in lymphomas, which is to prolong quality and duration of remission in patients who have responded to initial therapy and whenever possible to prolong the overall survival. Now, the results of maintenance rituximab trials were absolutely not the same in different B-cell lymphoma subtypes. In diffuse B-cell lymphoma, there is a very limited amount of evidence and uh, we have uh, a pretty controversial and uh, uncertain data. The ECO 4494 trial showed no benefit of two-year maintenance using four uh, weekly administration of rituximab every six months in a subset of elderly patients, older than 60, initially treated with RCHOP. There is a retrospective Chinese study suggesting a potential benefit for maintenance, and another randomized study already shown this morning by Professor Cavalli, which was presented in Lugano, uh, made by a, an Austrian and Czech Eastern European in, uh, consortium with seven, 27 countries involved and, and a huge number of patients, which is apparently showing no significant benefit in either progression for survival or overall survival by adding maintenance uh, rituximab every two months for two years after uh, a remission achieved with RCHOP. Sorry. Mantis cell lymphoma studies raise, are raising another question because in this large uh, European uh, study of uh, RCHOP followed or versus RFC followed or not by rituximab maintenance, the uh, benefit of maintenance seemed localized to the patient treated with initial our chop, whilst uh, it was significantly lower for the RFC uh, population. Now let's go to, to the follicular lymphoma. The, these curves are uh, coming from uh, putting together the, the cases treated in, uh, in our institution, in the uh, San Bartholomew's Hospital in London, in the hematology clinic at the University of Barcelona and at the University of Novara. Uh, all those institutions had in the past 20, 30 years nearly the same policies in the therapy of follicular lymphoma. And uh, with this large number of cases, we see that in an unselected population, there is clearly a, a, an improvement of outcome for follicular lymphomas through the time. And this is deemed to uh, be due at least partly to the advent of rituximab. And both to rituximab induction and rituximab maintenance. But what does rituximab maintenance mean? In, in general, we have seen several trials with different design with or without chemoimmunotherapy before rituximab and with quite different way and quite different duration of giving rituximab maintenance. So it is very difficult to, to sort out with a, a precise uh, conclusion. Nevertheless, in follicular lymphoma, maintenance was shown to improve progression-free survival after this uh, German regimen with mitoxantron, fludarabin, and cyclophosphamide. After either chemotherapy or our chemotherapy. This is a small study. This is a larger ECO trial showing a clear progression free survival benefit for relapsing follicular lymphoma treated with CVP. And again, we have the same evidence of some benefit using maintenance of aerator, CHOP or RCHOP in the RTC 2981 study at the median follow-up of uh, uh, 
36 months, the uh, trial was suggesting also a significant, a significant benefit for the overall survival. And so rituximab-based induction and in general maintenance has become the standard of care, at least in second line therapy for follicular lymphoma in the past 10 years. And this was justified by a, a meta-analysis which is uh, summarized in this picture. However, what happens after a prolonged follow-up to the ERTC 2981 patient treated with either CHOP or RCHOP, we still see at 72 months uh, from randomization follow-up time that there is still quite an important benefit in terms of progression pre-survival for maintenance therapy, which is clearly wider for patients receiving CHOP induction rather than for those treated initially with R-CHOP. But the overall survival did no longer remain statistically significant, possibly because of the unbalanced use of rituximab at progression. Indeed, our containing salvage regimens were given to 60% roughly of patients treated initially with CHOP and followed by observation in comparison to 26% of patients treated with RCHOP plus maintenance. Last but not least, the maintenance was associated with significant increase in grade three to four infection. This is the last arrived trial in addressing somehow this question. And a study which has been published a few weeks ago on uh, the JCO was presented in, in Lugano uh, a few months before, is, is the trial, a first trial of the Italian Lymphoma Foundation of 234 patients uh, older than 60 with advanced follicular lymphoma. They got the, the Italian standard uh, induction treatment with R, F, and D, comprising rituximab, fludara, metoxentron, and dexamethasone and uh, they got four cycles. In one month uh, before the fourth cycle, they were restaged, and patients with complete or partial remission or stable disease, 210, were receiving four weekly doses of rituximab as consolidation. Those achieving at least a partial remission stratified by the minimal residual disease detected by PCR were randomized to maintenance versus observation. You see that there is a, a, a three-year, an overall survival of about 90% and a progression free survival a bit uh, lower than 70%. And that the FLIP score is discriminating quite well the progression free survival of those patients. Again, the, uh, in this case, uh, even the two year progression free survival didn't reach a statistically significant difference. And uh, of course, no difference between the two arms detected for the overall survival. So the question raised by this study and uh, underlined by the accompanying editorial in the, new, in, in the JCO is, uh, is the maintenance effect the same after any regimen? Mantasal lymphoma told us that it may not be the case. And uh, the question is quite important because in the community, at least in Europe, now everybody is giving frontline, our bender followed by maintenance. And there is no trial addressing the issue of maintenance after our bender. Unfortunately, the ongoing German mountain trial for follicular lymphomas is randomizing between maintenance for four years versus maintenance for two years. So this question will not be answered by any of the ongoing studies, at least for follicular lymphoma. We might have some answer 
in the context of Waldenstrom, marginal zone, and mantle cell, but not for follicular lymphomas. And this is a pity. And also in the Italian study, maintenance added toxicity. So this, this study basically is questioning whether we should give maintenance to everybody frontline in, in the elderly setting. There are other not yet answered or not yet full answered questions on prolonged rituximab therapy in follicular lymphoma. One is the, when, frontline or at first relapse? Another is how long? And the third is, is chemotherapy always needed together with rituximab? For the first question, we had a, an initial response for, from the PRIMA study of frontline maintenance after six cycles of uh, rituximab plus CHOP. The study showed a significant benefit in terms of progression-free survival, which was the main endpoint. But however, again, no significant difference in overall survival. This is a completely different type of patient. In the PRIMA study, there were patients with advanced disease, uh, high tumor burden, and need of treatment, mainly because of symptoms. This is a, a UK study of patients with low tumor burden, no symptoms, which would usually be been uh, addressed with a wait and see policy, at least in the UK, and they were randomized between rituximab four times, rituximab four times plus rituximab maintenance, and wait and see. And in terms of progression free survival, there is a huge difference between these approaches. But overall survival is identical. So anticipating the therapy is not apparently changing the destiny. And what is the optimal duration of rituximab therapy? I'm now reminding you the, the Swiss uh, uh, clinical oncology uh, research group studies. The first one was the 3598 trial, and the philosophy was to see the impact of single agent rituximab in the therapy of follicular lymphoma. Both pretreated and non pretreated treatment deemed in need of therapy were randomized to either only four weeks, the initial standard of uh, uh, rituximab therapy in follicular lymphoma, four weekly uh, doses versus four weekly doses plus four additional doses given every two months to the patient with at least a stable disease following the induction. And the uh, studies show that the progression free survival can be roughly doubled by uh, doubling the number of rituximab doses with no evidence of any change in overall survival. Many years later, we were able to publish long-term results with a median follow-up of about eight years. And at eight years, 35% of responders are still in their remission, treated with only eight doses of uh, rituximab. And overall, the patient treated with a prolonged eight doses in comparison with the four had a significantly better event-free event survival either in the whole population and particularly in the population of the non-pretreated patients where 45% of chemo-naive responders are still in remission at eight years. This is suggesting that there is a very relevant portion of patients who may not need chemotherapy in front line. The overall survival was showing a trend in favor of the prolonged therapy, however, not statistically significant at all. So, Summarize the result of our study. The optimal way to give single agent is with a prolonged schedule. I am not calling this maintenance because it's just four additional doses, but it is, it is probably more a matter of semantic than of substance. When treated with this way, 
the, the chance of being still in remission at ATL is about 25% for the old population and 45% for the chemo naive patient responding to the initial treatment. And schedule was in the study the only one and most potent prognostic factor for response duration at multivariate analysis. So prolonged rituximab treatment appears safe and improved event-free survival. It might improve progressive uh, overall survival, but it was not statistically significant. This is a, a, a Nordic study uh, using two induction, rather, a, a prolonged therapy, but again, also them uh, found that treating patients without chemotherapy frontline, you may have an excellent overall survival. And uh, the next uh, study we did, uh, SAC, was a study 3503, which uh, kept the best arm of the previous one and randomized patient treated with four plus four doses to a prolonged maintenance therapy of rituximab given every second month until progression up to, five, up to a maximum of five years. This study required several years to get the uh, number of events needed for a final analysis, which was reached in May 2013. The final results per arm will be presented in December at ASH. So I'm not disclosing anything to you today, but I'm, telling, I'm showing that with a medium follow up time of six years uh, and, and a very narrow confidence interval, because it's from six to 6.5 years, we have uh, an excellent overall survival uh, against and, and uh, a median uh, progression free survival of five years for the whole population. Again, showing that there is a portion of patient who can benefit from rituximab only frontline without chemotherapy. If prolonged versus short rituximab is making any difference, you will see in December in New Orleans. And I'm going to conclude the role of maintenance with rituximab is still unclear in, in large cell and mantle cell lymphoma, while it's quite better defined in follicular lymphoma, where it improves clearly progression free survival either at frontline or at relapse. But the improvement of overall survival, which was leading to the registration of uh, uh, rituximab, is nowadays less evident. It is generally accepted that follicular lymphoma patients needing therapy should receive rituximab with and after RCVP or RCHOP at relapse. That is the wrong slide. However, whether this is true for any patient and for any chemotherapy is not fully elucidated. And also, it's not clear whether chemotherapy should be given to everybody. The long-term results of the Swiss study, together with uh, few data from other studies are suggesting that immunotherapy alone can have a role in at least a portion of follicular lymphoma patient. And this is something that we should specifically address in controlled clinical trial. So to anticipate your question, how am I doing to follicular lymphoma? I am proposing whenever possible entering in a, in a clinical trial. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.